Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and today I'm going to show you just a few of the new things in the Construct 3 release 336. Let's dive in. First up, I'm going to cover a new feature which we call Custom Actions. Now this does uh, what it says on the tin, it's a way to add uh, your own actions to objects. It works very similarly to the built-in functions feature if you've used that before. Uh, and you can see here there's a new menu option to add a custom action. In this project I've already set up a custom action for the piggy sprite um, and you can see I've given it the name animate and a description and this custom action will run a tween which will flip the sprite horizontally. Now you can see when I left click on a piggy it's going to use the custom action and you can see it appears in the action list along with all the usual actions I've got my custom action there called animate. So when I left click on a piggy it's going to call the animate custom action and it will run that tween. Let's see that in action. And there we go. So this is much like the functions feature but you can use it to organize uh, custom actions for the objects where it's appropriate. So this is a, a nice way to organize custom logic for your project. There's a lot more to this. I'm just going to very quickly uh, highlight another feature. Uh, this, there's more to it, so it will deserve its own video and blog post, which will uh, come out in the near future. But just to very quickly show um, a more interesting part of the custom actions feature, it works with families as well. So I have a similar setup here for a family called characters. So now I've got um, three kinds of sprites and uh, they're in a family. And when I left click on the family, it will do uh, the similar kind of thing. It will use the animate custom action, which will tween to flip it across its width. You can also add a custom action for one of the members of the family with the same name, and that works as an override. So now when this custom action runs for monkey ball sprite, it will do this custom action instead of the family one. And now if I preview the project, I can show how that works. So clicking the other members of the family will flip them horizontally and when I click the monkey ball sprite it uses the override custom action which flips it vertically instead and you can see here how it is tweening the height property instead of the width. One more thing I very quickly mentioned is you can also uh, use the original um, custom action from the family as well. So here I'm uh, going to call the original family um, animate custom action and then also do the tween. So if I preview that you can see the others work normally and the monkey ball will run both tweens. So custom actions with families give you a way to both override to replace family custom actions and also to extend by running the original family custom action and uh, doing more actions beyond that. Now again, this is just a very quick summary for this release video. I will go into more detail about how all of this works in a subsequent video and a blog post. Uh, but for now, I'm going to move on. So next up, uh, another thing new in this release are some improvements to the pathfinding feature. Uh, that's the behavior for finding paths around obstacles. Uh, you can see amongst some of the new uh, examples in this release, there's the pathfinding direct movement example and this helps visualize this feature. Previously, if you found a path to a location where it was clear around the whole area, it allows you to just move directly and it won't do diagonals um, or horizontal movement, it just goes straight there. But if it's not clear around the whole path, then you can see all these nodes appear. The new direct movement feature allows you to smooth the path by allowing each um, node along the way to be skipped if it's clear around it. So if I find a path to the same location now, you can see some of the nodes have been removed and it's a simpler, smoother path. That can be useful for smoothing out paths and uh, movement along the path. Next up, there's a new pathfinding groups feature as well, and this is useful for spreading out paths to prevent lots of objects taking the same path. So if I first find a path down to the lower right corner here without using path groups, you can see they all take the same path along the bottom here. 
If they all move along there, then it can get crowded, and you might want to make sure that some of them go a different way. Using path groups uh, allows the path to be spread out, and if, if I once again find a path to the same location, now some of them will go uh, the most direct way, some will go below, some will go above, and it spreads out all the paths, which will reduce crowding and make sure that they don't all try to squeeze down the same path. Next up, I'm going to show a useful new feature for the particles object called the fast forward action. Now, if I just preview this particle effect here, there's a nice fountain effect, but you can see it takes a couple of seconds to get started. What if you want to show that particle effect in full flow straight away? Previously, this was difficult to do. Now with the new fast forward action, you can say on start of layout, I'm going to fast forward the particles effect. Uh, by a time of three seconds. Now when I preview the project, the particle effect is in full flow straight away and if I uh, keep reloading it's always there running straight away so you don't need a little bit of time for it to sort of fill up. That's useful. Let's move on to one more thing which I'm going to show in this video. There's uh, been several improvements to the find feature over the past few releases and we have another improvement for you in this release. I've got uh, data editors here. Previously the find results would not take you to exactly the right place in the data editors. There's an array and there's a dictionary and they both have the word hello in them. So if I close those and search for the word hello now the find results will list the um, list the result inside an array and it shows you the location in the array and also the location in a dictionary and if I double click on the result it takes me right to that result inside the data editor. So this is uh, very handy if you have a lot of data in arrays and dictionaries and you want to find results and review them quickly in the editor. So there we go. As ever, there's loads more new in this release. See the release notes for the full details. That's all I'm going to cover in this video for now. That's just uh, four main highlights. Um, we hope you enjoy using this release and thanks for using Construct.